Okay, I don't know why my music is not playing. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Ciao. Can y'all hear it? Because it's not playing on my end. Or am I bugging? Okay. Well, <laughs> sorry about that. I don't know. I hit play and it's just silent. Let me let me try it again. I'm going to try one more time. If it doesn't work, that means it's on one. But I hope you guys are doing good today. Okay, so let's see. Let's see if it like plays. Hold on. Yeah, I don't know. It's not playing. Unless you yeah, can hear it. I can't hear the music. I don't know. It's not playing. Dang it. I hope it's not acting up because I have a lot of videos I got to share with y'all. So I don't know. I apologize. There's no intro. <laughs> It's always something with this stream, I swear. But anyways, y'all, it's a lot to talk about. I hope you guys are doing good. Thank y'all for y'all's patience. I thought I didn't have to come on until 540 because I was still categorizing some stuff. Okay, so y'all can't hear the music either. I don't know why I didn't play. I really hope it's not like that with all these videos I have because damn it, today I got time because, you know what I'm saying, we got a lot of stuff to talk about and hit on. But um, happy Wednesday to you guys. Thank y'all for tapping in with me. Um, it's a lot going on that I want to hit on. Um, but before I go there, um, everybody who ordered an ugly Christmas sweater shirt, everything has been mailed off. Um, I know a lot of people have been getting their shirts and tagging me. I appreciate it. You guys look lovely. Um, so if you have not gotten your shirt yet, be patient. They will be there before Christmas. So thank you to everybody who ran and got one. And... Um, we also have the new winter sweatshirts available, the ones that are like, you know, non-Christmas or whatever, um, for people who are interested in that. And those will be on Teespring. So let me go ahead and share my screen so y'all can see the new ones. And you can save 10%. Right now there's a special on the shirts. So these are the, um, the winter shirts here. Tis the season to be sipping. Fa la 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 ha 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 ha. Okay. So if you use code TEA2002, you'll save 10%. So if you guys are interested, um, I will post all the links and stuff down below for people who just wanted a regular, you know what I'm saying, winter sweatshirt without the words Christmas on there. Cause I understand everybody's not a Christian. You know, we got some Jewish people in the house, we got some Muslims, you know what I'm saying? And then we got some people who just, you know, are just not into all that. So um, I wanted to have other offers for people as well. So I'll post everything down below. I'm glad you guys like it. Y'all know I don't play with my designs. I like my stuff to be unique. Um, Jennifer always does the damn thing. So shout out to her. She did an awesome job. Um, I thought about it and um, we we're able to just kind of recreate, you know, another girl character. Um, and it was so funny because the outfit that I wore last stream I don't know if you guys saw it. I had posted on Instagram. It was like a crop top sweater dress. She really liked the dress. So that's what the, the character is wearing. She's wearing my outfit. Like these little characters be biting off my style, honey. So, <laughs> so in case y'all recognize the outfit, she really liked it. So that's what the little character is wearing. My outfit from last stream, you know what I'm saying? With the little crop top. But um, so yeah, it is a lot to get into. And we're going to get into some stuff today. Um, let me just go ahead and pull up my notes. Let's see, what, what should we hit on first? Oh, you know what? I want to hit on Croy Bierman. Now, I've told you guys this for a while. I've been a big fan of, um, well, not, not necessarily Kim Zosiak, but I watched her family show. Y'all know I, I've been watching Real Housewives of Atlanta from day one. And so when she met Croy at the time, he was young. I think he's like maybe five, six years younger than her. He was playing for the Atlanta Falcons. He adopted her daughters. And they ended up getting their own spinoff show called Don't Be Tardy for the Party. Okay? And I watched it. I enjoyed it. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the little kids, they were off the chain. Her older kids were off the chain. But Croy seemed like a really, really good man. Um, and he wanted to just, you know, blend the family together. And so they've been going through this really crazy breakup. And... um. She's caught the police on him, um, just different things, them arguing. One minute they're getting divorced, the next minute they're not. We've been covering this on Instagram. So the other day, Croy literally went crazy. 
Um, and he was caught on pol um, police surveillance camera. And it, it's really sad. It's really sad to watch. I'm hoping this plays because I don't know why they today I got time cuz did not play. So if this does not play, let me know because I also have it on YouTube. But you know how you got to freeze the frame so that way YouTube doesn't um, clock it. So hopefully this will play. Let me know if it does not play, you guys. Give me just a second. I'm going to um, share my screen really quick here. Because we got to watch this. This this broke my heart. I'm going to let it play real quick. Let me know if y'all can hear it. All right, come talk to me. Ma'am, stay right there. Can y'all hear? Because I can hear it. I don't know why today I got time because didn't play. I can hear this just fine. Can y'all hear it? I want to make sure y'all can hear it. Okay, y'all can hear it. Okay, perfect. So we're going to watch this together. We're going to watch this. What's going on with that? We're just having an argument. About what? About our fucking life. Okay, what What happened? What, why is why? our life? It's destroyed. What? Okay, what started the argument? Her inability to fucking solve problems. Okay, or address come over or here. do anything. Come over here. Why? Because I want to talk to you away from her. I don't want her to start screaming at you and and have a whole it's a, argument. It's nothing but an act. It's all a bunch of bullshit. What? What is? Everything she does. Okay, what does she do tonight? Everything. Everything, dude. I, I can't. I'm not going to do this because this right here does nothing but fuel her bullshit. I'm not doing this. This is narcissistic behavior. I'm not doing this. I'm just trying to figure out what the- There's argument. nothing to do. You shouldn't even be here. Who it called was... you? Your kids. Who, what kid? You have kids? I don't know. Whoever's in the house. Yeah, so we've what, been outside what, this whole time. What, 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 what was the argument about? Our life, what the, our life. Okay, and it's so fucking destroyed! Why, why is it getting so heated? Because our life is destroyed! What don't you understand? There's no money, there's no house! She wants, we're, we're getting divorced one day and we're not the next! Okay. She's fucking other men! What do you want? Just calm down. Calm down, but I don't have a fucking life! <sighs> I don't have somebody who won't fucking listen to me! Calm down. Oh, calm down! You want to live this motherfucker? You wouldn't, you wouldn't have lasted Calm for down. a year. You wouldn't have lasted a day in this fucking house. What's going on with Sarah? I just feel like I'm like, just been screaming at me for like two hours, like a crazy person, like a crazy person. All right, y'all. Whew. Let me say this, because so many times people like to dismiss men's feelings. And so many times we act like how men feel in relationships don't matter. I have been watching them from day one, okay? And I remember everybody rooting for him because not only was he a young man, think about this, this was a young man from Montana. He's not Hollywood at all. And to make it from Montana all the way to the Atlanta Falcons, right? That's like every young man's dream to play in the NFL, NBA, so, you know, he won the NFL lottery. He ends up meeting Kim. And she already has, you know, two daughters by two different men. He has no children. But in spite the fact, he still chose to marry her. He adopted her daughters. Then they ended up having about four more kids together. She even put her old ass eggs in jeopardy to have kids because she knew, you know, he's an Atlanta Falcon. He has money. Let me go ahead and pump, on, pump out some babies. Remember, she almost like died during childbirth a few times. And so to see Croy breaking down like that, I feel so bad for him because if you guys watch the show, that's not his demeanor. Corey is usually the most calmest. He's very frugal. He try to give those girls, you know, some type of like um, boundaries you know, set things in stone with them as a parent. And so many times it's so dismissive. Even the way the cop was talking to him just kind of condescendingly. Calm down. What's the big deal? That is a man who's at his wit's end. That is a man who's waking up and seeing that he's lost everything. Everything that, they, that he's worked for. 
is gone down the drain because of her gambling addiction and because she wants to floss on social media for people who do not matter. Her spending habits were ridiculous. They were living far above their means because of her and putting on this persona and this lifestyle for social media, for reality television, when all he wanted to live was a humble life. And she keeps on playing with this man and playing these little games because there's nothing worse, there's nothing more dangerous than a man who feels like he has nothing to lose and that he's lost it all. So Kim, you better stop playing these little games with him because what I hear is somebody who's at their wit's end, who is depressed, who realizes he has lost everything. He doesn't even have his family because Kim made him estranged from his own family. Remember, she cut off her own family too when she blew up. She stopped talking to her mom and her daddy and she did the same thing with his family. And you keep messing with this man and keep playing these little games so you can get on the blogs and get, and get attention. He might go postal on the whole family. I've never, ever heard Croy like that. I was shocked when I seen that video pop up the other day. I'm like, this is a man who was broken. Imagine to, like, I don't understand, especially when young kids are in sports. And this is, this is like a lifelong thing from the time they're in third grade and they're playing flag football. And they're putting their bodies at risk. And, you know, then you go from that to, you know, football after school then junior high football, then high school football. Then he ends up going to the NFL and this man has nothing to show for it. We don't talk a lot about men's mental health. That's why I always say the right person can either make or break you. And you have to be very selective with who you get with. Just like with the Kiki Palmer situation. You know, Croy wanted a family. He's from, you know, the Montana. He was cool living just like a regular small life, but he picked the wrong woman. And this woman has literally destroyed him. You could hear the pain in his voice. He says, I have nothing. I have nothing left. And then she goes on social media and she does this. This was on page six today. She thinks, you know, she's selling his stuff, slicing the prices, thinking this is funny. And this is why I don't envy any of these people in Hollywood on reality television. Because most of them don't really have anything. They just have a name. So now she's on um, the internet selling his luggage and things. Half price. Hey, guys. This is all only carried one time. A Louis Vuitton men's duffel bag. This is a garment bag. And this is a garment bag, which is really cool because they don't even make them with the hangers anymore. And then of course the little rolling um, bag as well. Excellent condition. Like I said, he carried it one time on the road to one of his football games. Okay guys, this is all only carried one time. A Louis Vuitton men's duffel bag. This is a garment bag. And this is a garment bag, which is really cool because they don't even make them with the hangers anymore. And then, of course, the little rolling um, bag as well. Excellent condition. Like I said, he carried it one time on the road to one of his football games. All right. So y'all just saw that video. Um, it's it's just really sad. I'm I'm... I'm heartbroken for them because like I said, and again, we don't know the ins and outs of anybody's relationship, right? Because we're not in there. But from what was shown, he was definitely trying to give the family and those girls structure. He was always telling her like, you know, you don't need the latest wig. We don't need the latest this and that. But because of wanting to put on a persona, there, there's no reason why they've made all this money from reality television. Most of the black girls that have been on Real, uh, on Real Housewives have never gotten a spinoff. Outside of Candy, most of them have never gotten a spinoff. She was blessed enough to get a spinoff. She's made more than enough money where she could have bought a home outright. She could have paid for that home outright. The fact that the home is going into foreclosure, they're in bankruptcy, it makes no sense. But that is a man at his wit's end 
And I suggest, Kim, you stop picking and poking at this man before he goes postal on you and your family. I've never heard him like that, ever. And like I said, I've been watching them from the time she first got with him when Sheree hooked them up at that party to their spinoff show. I've watched every episode. I have no shame in saying that. I was a fan of their show. And for this man to have lost everything because of her, her antics and her gambling, it's terrible. It's terrible. When they met each other, he drove an old ass pickup truck. He wasn't into Lamborghinis and Rolls Royces and stuff like that. And this is why people have to learn to live within their means and stop fronting, you know what I'm saying, for people who don't matter. Everybody's out here putting on these facades and now we're seeing these facades crumbling. So this whole situation is just really, really, it's, 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 heart, it's heartbreaking, you know? And, and you have people saying, oh, you know, he's acting crazy right now. Um, he needs to chill out. If that was a woman, if, if the genders were reversed, nobody would be telling her to chill out. They'd be saying, oh, that man drove her to that. That man drove that woman crazy. She has the right to rant and rave. He has every right to be upset and to speak his mind and not to be gaslit and told to calm down. Because trust me, she was pulling a Karen and going off and screaming. The police would have just let her. So the whole situation is just sad. At the end of the day, relationships are a two-way street. And anybody in a relationship, male or female, there has to be a respect factor. You have to treat people the way you want to be treated. And just because it's a man does not mean that they don't have emotions, feelings, that they don't, you know, that they're not at their wit's end, that they're not stressed out, having to figure out, you know, how they're going to pay their next bill, the lights, where they're going to go. I can imagine the stress that's on that man to play in the NFL, to go through all that, to, to quote unquote make it, only to lose it to a gold digger. It's sad. It's really sad. Somebody said they blame women every day. Well, no, it's not about people blaming women every day. It's about holding this woman particularly accountable because she keeps playing these little games, these social media games with that man. And like I said, if he snaps and he wakes up and offs the whole family, then everybody's gonna be, oh my gosh, oh, we didn't see this coming. Quit poking the bear. That goes for everybody, men or women. If you're gonna separate, separate and go y'all separate ways. Cause we are living in very, very bad times right now. Y'all keep, you know what I'm saying, trying to touch the stove trying to see if it's hot, you might wake up with a bullet. So quit playing with people, male or female. Because again, like I said, if the roles were reversed, there'd be a lot more sympathy. And I'm not saying that he doesn't hold any of the blame because again, he's a grown man. He was also there for the lifestyle and he got in over his head. But I see the games that are being played on her end. Her trying to be the sole victim. Neither one of them are blameless. Let me go ahead and read some of these comment, uh, super chats here. Therapy Queen, thank you so much for the $300 super chat, sis. I appreciate you. Uh, she was one of the first ones to send a super chat. She says, hello there. It's been a minute. I was able to catch a live. Merry Christmas to you and your family. I want to thank you for the time and energy you put into bringing us all of this good tea. I can't wait to see what 2024 is going to bring. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you for coming through and just always showing love and support. Um, I really want to do a lot of big things, you know, come 2024. Um, I have a lot of ideas of what I want to do with my channel and, you know, just you know, revamp some things. Um, and I feel like I'm going to cut off a lot of people in 2023. 
I'm leaving a lot of bad energy. People who don't appreciate, who want to take advantage, they will be left in 2023. I am moving forward in 2024. If you don't support me the way I support you, if our relationship is not a two-way street, you got to go. I'm no longer holding on to baggage. I'm no longer um, gonna allow myself to be other people's punching bags. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, there's gonna be a lot of stuff that I'm, I'm gonna be changing in 2024. Um, and I just, I just really want this channel to continue growing and taking off and to really focus on my audience. I, I really don't care about what else is going on in these YouTube streets as far as like other people, what they got going on on their channel. I'm focusing right here. You know, um, I know a lot of people were sad the other day when I posted my video and they saw the old clip of me going in on Rose McG McGowan. And people were like, you know, I miss when you used to do solo videos on camera. But what people don't understand is, somebody said, have my baby. <laughs> don't threaten me with a good time. But um, what people don't understand is the reason why I don't come on camera except for doing my live streams is because people set the tone on YouTube. You guys supported the people just doing voiceovers, not really putting in any work, just dropping two minute videos. So why am I gonna work harder than everybody else? I refuse, you know what I'm saying? So the only time you'll see me is when I'm live or in a Zoom meeting, or if you come to my live, you know, podcast shows, I'm not making, you know, I'm not dropping seven, eight videos per day, getting dressed, doing hair and makeup, because we don't get that type of um, leeway when we're women. You know, when we come on camera, we have to look a certain way. Guys, they can just roll out of bed, ain't brush their teeth, sleep in their eyes. Hey, y'all, here's a breaking news. No one cares. We don't get that luxury as women. And I, I got tired of it. I got tired of putting in more work and doing more and nobody else is. So I'm good. So yeah, if you like my old videos, watch my old stuff. You know, I'm going to come on live on camera when I'm live or doing interviews and things like that. Other than that, no, I'm not interested in doing solo videos on camera. Those were my 2018 days. It's a wrap. So yeah, so yeah, I, I appreciate y'all and I really do appreciate the support on this channel. Um, it means a lot to me. Um, and it lets me know that I have more support online from strangers that I don't personally know, right? Because y'all know me, I don't really know all of you guys. And that does not that's not lost on me. Like I said yesterday in the Zoom meeting, it's not lost on me that I have more people who support me um, online than even in my personal life. So I, I really appreciate you all from the bottom of my heart. And please don't start crying. Whew. Because I've been going through a lot, but it's okay. Um, Lexi says, you're my favorite YouTuber. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lexi. I appreciate you. Uh, Vele says, love you, T, and happy holidays. Love you, too, and happy holidays to you as well. Thank you so much. Um, Jasmine Smith sent $10. Says, thank you for all you do, Auntie. I started watching you at the start of COVID, and now me and my service dog are little tea sippers. I start my Homeland Security program in January. Wow, that's amazing. Congratulations and thank you so much for your support. Thank you. Um, Forever Your Leo, what's up, girl? Says, hey, T, wishing you and your family an early Merry Christmas and happy holidays. Thank you so much. Same to you and your family as well. Uh, Sierra Clarison, 499, says, sending love from Brooklyn to Random Topics. Did you see Jules trending on Twitter and Mark Zuckerberg building a doomsday prepper in Hawaii? I heard. I heard he's building a doomsday prepper. Um, I don't know what Jules is trending for. I haven't, I'm not sure, but I did hear about Mark Zuckerberg. And it's very interesting that after the Hawaii fires, if you guys have not watched my Hawaii, my Maui, Hawaii deep dive, um, please watch it. It's very interesting that after all of that went down, this man is now there building bunkers in Hawaii. Um, if this is not telling you what is to come, I don't know what else to do and say. But remember when the when the conspiracy theorists, um, you know, were saying this years ago, the truthers, we were, we were removed, we were banned, we were shadow banned, we were demonetized. So now everything that people have been saying for years is coming to light. Somebody says, Jules has a sex tape. Mm, okay. I'm gonna have to check that out, child. Uh, let's see here. Aaron says, hey, auntie, just wanna say I love you and your channel. 
Can't wait for the Diddy deep dive. I remember I asked some months ago, but Merry Christmas. Yes, that deep dive is definitely coming. So thank you so much for your support. I appreciate you. Uh, Kelson499 says, hey, T, looking amazing. Just received my Christmas sweater. I love it. My 10-year-old is a mini tea sipper and it slays. LOL, happy holidays to you and yours. Thank you so much. And thank you for purchasing a sweater. I'm glad you were able to receive it. So thank you. Um, let's see here. Don't shadow ban my YouTube. Sent five says, hey, T, this is my first super chat. I've been a tea sipper since 2012, but for some reason I'm shadow banned from commenting. LOL, happy holidays. Thank you for the support. And I'm glad your comment came through. So thank you so much. Um, you know, that's that's what YouTube does, unfortunately. So I'm glad you were able to get through. Uh, let's see here. Just Geese at 999 says, that man is breaking and it's sad. I remember his parents saying they didn't want them together. Now look, her fake ass tears. Yeah, it is. It's it's really sad, you know, that a lot of, um, like I said, a lot of guys go through things too. And a lot of times it's dismissed until it's too late. So it's very sad. I just hope that they end up leaving each other. Yeah, I hope they end up leaving each other. Oh, y'all said, oh, Jules Solange's son? Oh, shit. I thought y'all was talking about that white girl. Yes, Jules. Oh, I didn't know with Solange. Oh, no, I don't want to see a, a... No, ain't he underage? No, I don't want to see that. Uh, I take that back. I thought y'all was talking about the white girl. Yes, Jules, who got into it with Kanye West. I thought y'all was talking about her. I didn't know with Solange's son. I'm all like, I can't wait to see that porno. No, the hell, like, I can't wait. I didn't know it was him. I apologize. I had no idea it was that Jules. I thought it was the white girl who's of age. I didn't know it was a little boy. What he, who he fucking? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I'm down, I don't want to see it because, like I said, he's, he's young to be my child. Who's on the tape, though? And how did this leak? This boy, at this point, Jules, okay, hold up. Mama Tina needs to whoop his ass. He is bringing shame to this family. We seen all the mess he did with Sky Jackson a few years ago. Jay-Z and Beyonce don't have this much drama. Why is it always Jules, Solange's son, on some fuck shit? Bringing shame to the Carters. We know you fucking. He's a cute little boy. But why is there a sex tape out? But who is he smashing, though? I'm curious. <laughs> oh, he's 19? Look, somebody wrote, he's legal, bitch. He's 19. I still don't want to see it, though. Because I still remember him in that damn uh, The Soldier video. Okay? Where they at? Where they at? Want to take care of me? You know what I mean? And Solange had the belly. You know, they carry big things, if you know what I mean. I, I still remember her being pregnant with him. I don't want to see Jules' sex tape. It's bad. Yeah, he was in her belly. I just, I'm not interested. That's still, that's too young. 19, that's too young. He's always involved in some mess. So y'all not going to write who he's smashing? Was he smashing Sky Jackson in the sex tape? I'm just asking. Because I'm not going to go look for it. I'm not interested. He was just, oh gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh no. Who leaked it though? Did he put it up online or did somebody take his phone? He's smashing a random? A grown woman. A random grown woman. Oh wow. It's five different videos? Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, Jules is wildin'. I mean, he grown, but I mean, good gosh. And you know the Knowles Carter family, they're, they're so private. He doing way too much. Jason Lee leaked it. Why is that grown man leaking that little boy video? Jason, you know you did wrong for that. He must be mad at Beyonce or something. He over here leaking her uh, Beyonce's nephew's sex tape. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm I'm good. I really thought y'all was talking about the white girl. So, yeah, I apologize. No, I'm not interested in seeing that. It's too much. There's too many little kids out here doing too much. He was 17 at the time and she was 20. So he's underage. That's underage porn, ain't it? If he was 17. Oh, wow. Hmm. <laughs> Let me get back focused. <laughs> we done turned this into the jewels. 
the, the, the Jules uh, knows uh, sex tape tour. Uh-uh, he doing too much. Doing way too much. Wow. Mm. On his auntie's internet. You know, we were like, on Beyonce's internet, Jules is out here fucking something, huh? I guess. Hopefully he used protection for you end up like a teen mom like his mama. Shit. So anyways, y'all, we got to talk about this situation. And some of y'all may feel a way, but I don't give a damn. I got to keep it real. I got to keep it real. Um, Hollywood is clearly imploding, imploding on itself, right? Um, the money ain't moneying. The checks ain't coming in like they used to come in. And so Taraji P. Henson is out here crying tattoo tears. Uh, Kiki Palmer is co-signing her tears. Uh, she's been trending all over Twitter today. She's been going off about pay inequality and her not getting no money. Um, it's very interesting. Very, very interesting. So, which one we want to start with first? Because you know she's the color purple with Fantasia. She's crying about her pay in the color purple. Let me find the video. Okay. We're going to watch. I have a few videos of Taraji. We're going to watch them. And then I'm going to also share with you what Kiki Palmer uh, was retweeting as well concerning the situation. We're going to have honest dialogue here. Some people may be, may be mad. You know, I don't give a fuck. Um, be mad. But we're gonna, we have honest dialogue here. Okay? So let me share this tab. Um, Y'all know I'm petty. I do have my tiny violin ready. Okay? So let's go ahead and watch this. Um, you get tired. Mm -hmm. I hear people go, you work a lot. Hold on, let's start from the beginning. I'm just tired of working. So hard. Being gracious at what I do. Getting paid a fraction of the cost. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of hearing my sisters say the same thing over and over. Mm -hmm. Um, you get tired. Mm -hmm. I hear people go, you work a lot. Yeah. Well, have to. The math ain't mathin'. Mm -hmm. And when you start working a lot, you know, you have a team. Mm -hmm. Big bills come with what we do. Yes. We don't do this alone. The mm -hmm. fact that we're up is a whole entire team behind yes, us. Yes. They have to get paid. So when you hear someone saying, oh, such and such made $10 million. No, that's not that. That didn't make it to their account. Mm -hmm. Know that off the top. Uncle Sam is getting 50%. That's right. Okay? Mm -hmm. So do the math. Mm -hmm. Now we have 5 million. Mm -hmm. Your team is getting 30% or whatever your team is getting off of what you grossed. Sometimes not more. after what Uncle Sam took. Mm -hmm. Now do the math. Mm -hmm. So I just, I'm, You're tired. I'm, a, I'm only human. And, and mm -hmm. it seems every time I do something and I break another glass ceiling, when it's time to renegotiate, I'm at the bottom again mm -hmm. like I never mm -hmm. did what I just did. Mm -hmm. And I'm just mm -hmm. tired. tired. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm tired. Mm -hmm. I'm tired. Mm -hmm. mm. I get that. Mm. We're all tired, ma'am. <laughs> Shit, bitch, I'm tired. <laughs> the nine to five worker is tired. <laughs> Shit, sometimes I be just drained from researching and having to, you know, work and do what I do. We're all tired, ma'am. Okay? But that's not the only video that went viral. She's been snapping about her pay all week. You know, the tea sippers are petty. All you see is tiny violins in the chat. So we're going to watch this other video. She was on Twitter wilding out. This is another video of her. Was the best acting business decision that you made. So whether that be representation wise. Firing everybody after Cookie. Everybody has to fucking go. Where is my deal? Where's my commercial? Cookie was top of the fashion game. Where is my endorsement? What did you have set up for after this? That's why y'all haven't seen me in so long. They had nothing set up. All they wanted was another cookie show. And I said, I'll, I'll do it, but it has to be right. The, per the people deserve, she's too beloved for y'all to fuck it up. And so when they didn't get it right, I was like, well, that's it. And then they had nothing else. You're all fucking fired. Mm. 
All right. Um, let's see. It was one other thing too. Okay, Kiki Palmer. So we're gonna go ahead and listen to what good old Kiki had to say about the situation here. All right, let me share this tab. Keep y'all's tiny violins on deck. So this is what Kiki Palmer had to say. Let me kind of blow this up a bit here. Well, somebody, she was retweeting somebody. Person says, watch this. Taraji is telling the absolute truth. 70 to 80% gross income is gone off the top for taxes and commissions, agents, managers, lawyers, and for those who pay other employees as well. Baby, the math ain't mathin', and I know you're like 10 million minus 8 million is still 2 million. This is so sad. Then she says, yes, that's true. However, 10 million is very rare. Most of your favorite black actresses make about 250K to 500K for starring in movies. So 50 to 100K net might only get for one project a year. Now they have to pay social media managers because y'all would drag them if they don't have dope content stylists because y'all would drag them if they look busted. Hair and wigs because y'all would drag them. Um, hair and wigs because y'all would drag them if they look busted. Not to mention important shit like childcare, school for kids, keeping a roof over their heads, somewhere where they can feel safe with their families away from paparazzi who invade their privacy. I know this life looks glamorous for someone like her. I know there will be comments like 100K is a lot of money. Is it? And I heard, and I heard on the street, street Taraji, you had the audience. So, so Kiki was, you know, retweeting that. Let me say this, okay? And this is why I feel no ways. And this is not to be mean. This is not, you know, I'm a, I'm a fan of Taraji. I've met Taraji, you know, really nice woman. So this is like, no, you know, it's not no hate on Taraji. Um, I've been saying this for years that Hollywood is imploding on itself. Now, I know a lot of y'all remember when I moved out to LA. You know, I needed a fresh start. It was after a breakup. I wanted to, you know... I just wanted to leave IT, start all over, you know, get into like acting, know more about videography. I was taking classes. I was doing a lot of stuff with YouTube back then, getting Red Cam certified and learning how to like edit and like really, you know, do work. And I don't know if y'all remember me saying this, that I had learned a lot in LA. And one thing I learned in LA that I used to say all the time is that it took me moving out there to see that everything was smoke and mirrors, okay? And remember me always telling people, y'all need to stop being in front of the camera. It's not the actors and the rappers and the people in the music videos who make the money. The money is behind the scenes. Put a teacup, if you guys remember me telling you guys this years ago, that the real money is in production. It's not the actors and the actresses, right? So... With that being said, the girl in the tweet was saying, if they don't have a glam squad, if their hair is not done, you guys will drag them. If they look busted, you guys will drag them. First and foremost, this is why I don't feel really bad for Hollywood like that. Because y'all decided to perpetuate nonsense as if y'all really had it like that. And now that we're seeing the facade is crumbling, most of y'all don't have it like that. But for years, you guys talked down to the average man and woman. For years, you guys acted like people who worked a nine to five were just haters and jealous. Oh, we're on the red carpet. I'm wearing a $10,000 Givenchy dress and whatever Dior and all this stuff. You guys are just jealous. You guys are just mad. Oh, keep on taking out my trash. Keep, you know, da 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 It was all this arrogance from a lot of people who had no business being arrogant. And I think the problem is a lot of folks equate fame with money. And I've always told you guys, you may have fame, you may have notoriety, you may have facial recognition where people recognize you everywhere you go. But there were so many people I met in LA who were dead broke, who were literally living with roommates. People used to be so shocked when they would come to my apartment. And the fact that I had a two bedroom apartment with no roommate. That's a luxury. I didn't have a roommate. Why? Because my kids would come during spring break. I would keep my kids the whole summer. And I don't want nobody in my house, you know, friend or not with my kids. 
So I always kept the spare bedroom for when the boys came to L.A. And then eventually my oldest moved to L.A. And he, you know, was in the second bedroom. But people used to be shocked that I was able to afford a two-bedroom apartment. Most people didn't know who the hell I was. I wasn't famous. But you had famous people out there because they are recognizable and people saw them in one or two projects. They feel like they don't have to work. They don't need a side gig. They're just going to rest on, you know, I'm pretty, I'm cute. I was in such and such movie. And I just think the whole situation is sad. And what bothers me the most is five years ago, Monique was saying the same thing. You know, I've done updates on the whole Monique situation over the years. And I even had to come back and say, you know what? Monique was right in certain aspects. And I think, you know, a lot of the internet kind of dismissed her initially because it was more about Monique than everybody else. But then as she started talking and was saying that she's speaking for women who are coming behind her, then it started making more sense to me. So I had to retract some of the things that I felt about Monique at the time. But what was very interesting is when Monique was out here preaching this, None of these black actors and actresses stood alongside Monique and said, sister, you're right. Remember around this time, Cookie Lyons was that girl. Monique said Lee Daniels promised her that line. I mean, excuse me, that, that character, excuse me. And everybody clowned her, said Monique is lying. You can never be Cookie. That Taraji was meant for the Cookie character. Remember that the, the girl Precious. Gabourey Sidibe even had the nerve to talk down to Monique. Acted like Monique was a hater. And I said, you might want to simmer down, sis. We wouldn't know who you were if it wasn't for Precious. Let's not act like you have features that are very marketable in Hollywood. If you're getting roles, that's because they're hooking you up. That's because you're playing the same type of character. So many people turned their back on Monique, sat there quietly. Even Whoopi told her to play the game. So now when I hear all this five years later, I got to pull out my tiny violin because where was y'all to stand next to Monique when she was saying this? She was speaking for y'all, but because you were hot at the time, y'all not ready for this conversation because see, the internet has a short attention span. Y'all are focusing on her crying now. But when she was hot at the time and she was the it girl on Empire and defending that lunatic Jussie Smooley, Smooley, whatever the fuck his name is, defending him. Don't forget, Jussie's the one who got y'all show canceled. But y'all not ready for that conversation. And over what? His ego. So now that the checks ain't coming in and the money ain't money in, they want the regular average man and woman who's also having to pay groceries, light bill expensive, people's rents are going up, mortgages going up. We're supposed to feel bad? I think not. Y'all should have stood next to Monique. So let me go ahead and play y'all a flashback. Because you know that's one thing we do over here on this channel is we keep receipts. I'm going to play you two flashbacks of Monique. One of her on uh, The View with Whoopi Goldberg trying to gaslight her and telling her, oh, well, you got to play the game and all this goofy shit. And then we'll play the next one. See, people be forgetting. I'm not moved by any of this stuff. Because when Monique came out, the whole entertainment, especially with the black women, um, the, the black female actresses, Really should have been the main one standing next to her. But they chose not to. Because at that point they were eating. The economy was good. They was on red carpets. They were being praised. You're only as hot as your latest project. Once your project is out, you know, nobody's watching it. Out of sight, out of mind. That's just reality of it. I'm only as hot as my last live stream. I'm only as hot as my last video. I can put up some content today, and by tomorrow, everybody's like, where's the new video? It's like, damn, can I breathe? <laughs> so we're going to watch Monique. 
because when Chris Rock and Dave Chappelle received their um, offers, mm -hmm. they were $20 million. They were very public about the offers. Mm -hmm. When Amy Schumer initially received her offer, it was $11 million. Mm -hmm. She went back to Netflix and said, I shouldn't get what the ledgers are getting, mm -hmm. but because I'm a woman, I should get more. And Netflix agreed, and they then gave her $2 million more. Mm -hmm. That's where the $13 million okay. comes from. So in the discussion with Netflix, Robbie Prohl, who was vice president of comedy, when he was speaking with my husband, Sydney, and our attorney, Ricky Anderson, they were saying, you know, <coughs> speaking in reference to the deal, and they wanted to know, how did you come up with that number? Mm -hmm. How is it that Monique gets paid 126 less mm -hmm. than Amy Schumer would get mm -hmm. paid? Because what happens is our finish line keeps changing. And when I say that, Whoopi, as a black woman in Hollywood, see, if initially you're told, build up your resume, and that's what will get the money. Then you build up your resume. And then they'll say, well, you know what? We see the resume, but we'll get them the next time. All right. And you never meet your next time. Right. So when it comes to Netflix and with Amy Schumer and Dave Chappelle and, and Chris Rock, and let me say this, what they got, they were supposed to. Mm -hmm. I don't have an issue with my sister Amy, mm -hmm. nor my brother Dave and Chris. Mm -hmm. But when the vice president of Netflix says to my husband and our attorney, by the way, Monique is a legend too. Uh -huh. Well, if I'm a legend, why wouldn't I get what the legends are getting? When Wanda Sykes came out, I applauded that. And I understand why oftentimes you don't be the first one to come out. Yeah. Because it can be a scary place. But then when you know that Wanda Sykes is with the same agent as Dave Chappelle, as Chris Rock, as Amy Schumer, why was Wanda Sykes the only one offered $250,000? That and is when, suspicious. That is very suspicious. Well, let, me, let me say something before we... All right, let me come back on the screen. Now I want to show you guys... Um, another video here of Monique talking. So th these conversations have been had for a long time. I don't understand why the internet is all of a sudden acting like Taraji is breaking some type of news or barrier. She's not. Uh, hold on, where's that video at? Okay, here it is. This was when she was on... Um, Comedy hype. Let me share my screen here. This was just, I think, four years ago. She was literally in tears. Them little ones coming behind you. You better give a damn about you. That crushed me that day. And her Hold from on. Essence saying, listen, don't bullshit it. When she walked away, Essence walked away. But when I got those women that pulling me up saying, hey, little sister. Let me talk to you for a minute. So when I get Whoopi Goldberg on the flip saying, them little ones coming behind you. You better give a damn about you. That crushed me that day in her dressing room. Because see, Whoopi Goldberg told me the salary she makes from The View. And that hurt my feelings. That you've been there for 10 years and you accept them paying you that. And you telling me, don't worry about the little one coming up. God damn if I ain't got to be worried about you too. Because you accept that salary, it makes it hard for me. And how hard do you think it's going to make for the one who ain't here yet? Because you accept that salary. So there's... Stand in my sister's dressing room. And she say to me, you can't be worried about that one coming up. Well, what if moms Mabley didn't worry about you? What if those ones didn't make it better for us? So I try not to take it personal, but it's personal. Because these are the women I look to. So I don't want the little girl who's not here yet, or a little girl right down the street at the juice bar that says, oh my goodness, that's Monique. I don't want her to walk away and say, that ain't who I thought she was. Mm. So y'all just heard that. And then also, let's not forget, Viola Davis was also speaking about this years ago as well. But again, everybody was, nobody said anything. It was, it was okay. Okay, hold on here. 
I got the Oscar, I got the Emmy, I got the two Tonys, I've done Broadway, I've done off-Broadway, I've done TV, I've done film, I've done all of it. I have a career that's probably comparable to Meryl Streep, Julianne Moore, let's Sigourney Weaver, they all came out of Yale, they came out of Juilliard, they came out of NYU, they had the same path as me. And yet, I am nowhere near them. Not as far as money, not as, as far as job opportunities, nowhere close to it. But I have to get on that phone and people say, you're a black Meryl Streep. <laughs> there is no one like you. Okay, then if there's no one like me, you think I'm that? You pay me what I'm worth. Yeah. You give me what I'm worth. Yeah. I got the Oscar. All right. See, I just heard what she had to say, Viola Davis, as well, who's another very talented black woman. Very, very cool. Very down to earth. Um, so the whole situation, like, I, I get Taraji being upset, um, you know, being mad and things like that. But again, I have to look at it like, are you upset now because the roles aren't there? You're not getting booked like that. You're, you're, you're this isn't around the time of empire anymore. And that's why I always say, you know, be careful. The ones that you see on your way up are the ones that you'll see on your way down. You know, and that's one thing. Imagine if all of those women would have rallied behind Monique and Viola and um, Wanda Sykes when they were speaking about this five years ago. Because there's power in numbers. Maybe things could have changed. You know, so to be talking about it now, to me, you know, it, it's sad. But let's also not act like they didn't put on this persona. And I'm not saying Taraji herself. I'm not, you know, this is not just towards Taraji. I'm just saying Hollywood in general. They created this whole, the haves and have nots. We're up here. You guys are down here. And now we're finding out it's not like that. A lot of these folks are really struggling. That veil is being lifted. We And it's not just the, the acting world, the rappers too. That money's not money in. But for years they sat here and threw their wealth in people's faces and acted like people who worked in nine to five were beneath them. How are your fans, the people who support you, who come and watch your movies, who tune into your TV shows, who buy your music, who stream your music, how the fuck are we beneath you? You wouldn't be where you are at today if it was not for us. And that also goes for YouTubers. I cannot stand arrogant ass YouTubers and social media influencers. You were sitting at somebody's desk Tell my, hey, you know, welcome to such and such. How can I help you? Thank you for calling. You were doing customer service. You were flipping burgers. You were wiping down tables before you lucked up on a YouTube bag, before you lucked up on a TikTok bag. So how dare you sit up here and then act better, think that you're better than the people who are viewing you in front of the, on their laptop or on their phone. It does not make sense to me. It does not make sense. I think a lot of people need to humble themselves. We are living in a world where things are tumultuous. Everybody's trying to get money, pay their bills, and I get it. But it's very hard for regular people to have sympathy for Hollywood elites. Right now, Hollywood is crumbling on itself. We talked about this yesterday in Discord. I was up late last night typing shit around midnight. They said they're about to drop Jeffrey Epstein's list during, you know, Capricorn slash Aquarius season. Judge ordered. And we're going to see everybody's name who's officially on the list. And we're having a very interesting conversation because people are asking, like, well, why are they exposing all of this? You know, why, like, why are, you know, these celebrities coming out? They're talking about sexual harassment, you know, Christian Keys, you know, Vera Wang is out here. Or who is that? Alexander Wang, excuse me. He's out here grabbing people's nuts and all types of weird shit. And I said to myself, the reason why they're allowing all of this to be exposed now is that they're ready to clean up house. This entire entertainment industry is imploding on itself. Diddy was just the first straw. There's going to be more crumbling. There's going to be more people being taken down. And what they're going to do 
is they're going to start ushering in AI. It's too many complaints. You got black women crying about pay inequality. You got Diddy out here wilding out. You got Alexander Rang out here sexually harassing models. You got people on power trips. We can't afford to keep getting sued. People aren't watching movies. Nobody's holding Hollywood in the entertainment industry out of pedestal anymore. Kanye's out here blasting us. So let's get rid of all the humans and usher in AI. Because they don't even need background actors anymore. The backgrounds are now digitally edited. And the same thing is happening in the influencer world. You have AI influencers that are way bigger than I could ever dream to be. And they're not real people. And all that money that's going to that digital influencer is going to the people who are programming that influencer and feeding it what to say. So this is bigger. If, if people, and maybe I'm reaching, y'all know I'm a crazy conspiracy theorist. That's what they call me. But I feel like a lot of this is even bigger than people can even imagine. It's not like they're exposing these people and the truth is coming out because they, they care about the public knowing. They're cleaning up house. We can make a digital virgin version of Taraji P. Henson. So I don't have to pay her fairly. It'll be a lot cheaper anyways, a lot less of a headache. So it's, it's sad. It's a lot of stuff coming down the pipeline. It's a lot of stuff coming down the pipeline. And again, this is not to diminish or disrespect how she feels. You know, I know her tears were real. Um, but I, 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 there, for me, I just feel no ways. Because these were conversations we've been having for years. And when Monique was saying the same exact thing verbatim, all the top black actresses were quiet. They weren't saying anything because they were the hot ones at the time. And now that those roles are drying up and y'all having to revamp the color purple, not sure who asked for that, but I'll check it out because I love the original. Now that y'all are forced to be playing roles on Netflix and become YouTube YouTubers and you know, Spotify podcasters. Now all these folks want sympathy. And I'm sorry, a lot of people who are working nine to five, they're like, we don't care. When the fast food workers were striking, y'all weren't picketing next to them. Y'all weren't standing next to them. When the nurses who actually save lives went on strike in New York and were talking about their grievances, outside of me doing a huge call-in show for the nurses who in Hollywood gave them a platform? I did almost a three hour show where I let nurses call in and let us know what is really going on in their industry. When the teachers were striking and going through it, I lended my platform for regular teachers to call in and let us know what's going on in their industry. Who in Hollywood is doing that? But then in the same breath, they want everybody else to care about their plight. It's hard to feel sympathy when, and I, again, this is not about Taraji, I'm just talking about Hollywood in general. It's hard to feel sympathy when for years, you guys have made it seem that if we can't afford this, if we're not jumping out of Lambos and Rolls Royces and wearing designer, we're nothing. And to blame the people and say, oh, well, if they don't have the top stylists and the top you know, outfit persons, you know, whatever, hairstylist, makeup artist, y'all will clown them. Is your ego that fragile? I get clowned all the time. This shirt cost me $10. I don't give a damn who don't like it. I buy what I want to buy. If I want something more high end, I can get that. But I'd rather wear something that is affordable. You know, how, you know how many times I've been made fun of because I've posted the same, I've posted myself wearing the same pair of shoes on Instagram? And what did I say? Don't y'all wear, what? So y'all wear y'all shoes one time and throw them away? You're always wearing those pair of black pants. Yeah, because there's a thing called a washer and dryer. So you can't shame me because I live in the real world. 
I'm no different than anybody else. When your clothes get dirty, you throw them in the washer and dryer and you rewear them a few days later. I'm not posting one outfit on Instagram and then throwing it in the trash to live up to some weird hype from social media. So maybe if a lot of celebrities lived in the real world and stopped trying to front for strangers who technically don't really care. They're just there for the drama, the tea. Half of them don't even watch movies or listen to your music. Then things would change. There's nothing wrong with we wearing your clothes. There's nothing wrong with posting the same outfit, you know, God forbid, twice. I've worn this shirt before in a video. And I'll probably wear it in another video a month from now. Stop letting people put expectations on you that they don't have for themselves. When I go outside, I don't see people's hair slayed with baby hairs and, you know, makeup to the gods. I see regular men and women when I'm outside. So you're not going to shame me and make me feel like I have to look a certain way or, you know, dress a certain way or have my hair a certain way. I do my own hair. People make fun of my wigs all the time. They're not slayed. They're ghetto. They're da -da -da -da. That's your opinion. It makes me no difference. I'm still going to come on camera and have a good stream. So I think maybe some of these, these, these celebrities need to stop letting their ego drive them and stop caring about what people who technically don't matter think about them. Because nobody's forcing you to spend all your money on stylists, makeup artists, a whole glam squad. Who remembers Shay, uh, J uh, Jen Shaw? Remember she had the Shaw squad. A team about 10 people to dress her and do her makeup and put her clothes together. Where's Jen Shaw today? Sitting her ass in prison. Again, busy fronting and living above their means. And for what? For people who don't matter anyways. So yeah, it's, it's hard for me to feel bad. You know, so I'm sorry if I'm offending people and y'all feel like I'm being mean. But I've watched how a lot of these celebrities and influencers have changed the mentality of the youth. Where now kids, they feel like they have to look a certain way. You have kids who feel like they have to go to, you know, in high school, they have to have 20 inch weaves and Balenciaga bags and, you know, the latest this and that. When we were in school, we couldn't afford no high-end name brand stuff. As long as your clothes were clean and neat and ironed and you knew how to put it together, that's all that mattered. So I think as a culture, as a society, we had to revamp a lot of things. So, you know, it is, it's sad. It is sad that black women on average get paid a lot less. None of them are lying about this. Taraji, Monique, Viola Davis, it's the truth. Even here on YouTube, they, play, they pay white influencers way more than they'll ever pay me. And then when I'm like, well, no, I have an audience and I actually have real people on my channel, not bots. Let's start there. I don't buy subscribers. So now I'm not taking that. Well, that's the most we can give you. I'm good. I'm out. Because I know my worth. Because I know a white girl with less subscribers, y'all would have no problem cutting her a, 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 a big check. Just simply because she fits the aesthetic of the algorithm. So, I mean, we do, we, we get the short end of the stick on social media. But am I going to sit here and cry all day about that and be like, oh my God, you guys, let me tell y'all about this brand deal. You know, they're not willing to pay me, you know, X amount of dollars. Y'all don't want to hear that shit. Not when y'all got to pay for gas and y'all got to get up and work a nine to five. Y'all got babies to take care of. I'm still blessed and privileged in spite the fact. And I understand that. But yeah, it's, it's definitely unfair. But what, what you going to do about it? You have to find other ways to market yourself. You have to find other streams of income. You can't depend on one thing. I've been saying that for years on here. I'm not ever going to just solely depend on YouTube. You have to find other ways to take care of yourself and understand that your digital footprint follows you. If all this ends tomorrow, guess what? I can go back to doing IT. A lot of these bitches online can't go back to doing nothing but selling pussy on OnlyFans because their digital footprint is so messed up, no real employer will hire them. 
But those are conversations folks ain't ready for. So, you know, it's just, it's just the truth of the matter. Uh, let's see here. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> y'all not be going there, child. Meant to say cat. <laughs> All right, Shy B send $50. Says, hey, T, your content uh, keeps me sane, kept me sane this year. It's been a tough one. Wishing you a happy holidays. Thank you so much. And just thank you for the support. I'm glad that my content kept you sane. I appreciate you coming through, sis. Thank you. Uh, Kirk Zavole. Hold on. My page is refreshed. Hold on. Let me scroll back up here. He sent 10 says, hey, T, I'm sorry to hear that you're going through a lot personally behind the scenes. I hope my second super chat brings you joy and a smile. I want to say happy holidays to you and your family. Thank you so much. That means a lot to me. Um, just just thank you for caring. You know, just just keep me in prayer. That's all I ask, you know. But um, thank you guys so much. Um, just coming on here and talking to y'all makes me feel so much better, you know. So thank you guys. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Anetta Harris says, thanks again for the Zoom last night. Always supporting and sending love here in the Discord. Happy holidays to you and your fam from my baby tea sipper and family. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. I'm glad you were able to attend the Zoom meeting yesterday. It was definitely a really, really good discussion. So thank you so much. Um, Mufasa's <laughs> illegitimate son. I like that. <laughs> Y'all's names be cracking me up. Sentence says, I remember we talked about the era of reconquering. And that's why all these billionaires are building bunkers. They're putting money under their mattress while they take ours and make it cashless. You look sexy, T. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Yes, it's a lot that's going down right now. It's a lot of stuff, you know, that that's being told. You know, a lot of things have been foreshadowed, the cashless society. Um, the last video that I did when I was showing y'all my last deep dive, when I was showing y'all, um, cause I told y'all a while back, I've been going back and I've been rewatching like a lot of old school cartoons. Cause there was so much truth in these cartoons back in the day. And when you're like in third grade, you don't understand new world order and all that stuff. But when you go back and you watch some old eighties and nineties cartoons as an adult, you will be blown away. Put a teacup if you guys remember my G.I. Joe connection to the cashless society that I did in my last deep dive that I did on um, the whole Gaza, Israel situation. So a lot of this stuff is predictive programming. A lot of this stuff is things that have been talked about, seeds that have been planted for years, and now we're seeing everything manifest. So, you know, these celebrities buying bunkers and, you know, building bunkers, all this, this stuff has been foreshadowed and talked about. And I feel like the fact that they're doing this lets us know that, you know, there's there's something to come. There's something to come. You know, it's very, very scary. Yeah, the G.I. Joe reference was crazy. You know, like just thinking back about like, you know, the Cobra Commander and just everything that they were doing, the, even the weaponry in G.I. Joe. Like when I went back and I really started watching it, I'm like, this is insane because now these weapons exist. They didn't exist back in the 80s. It was in the cartoons. And now they exist. The lasers and things like that. You know, so it's it's crazy. It really is. Uh, let's see here. Christina Parker said, 999 says, worked on Empire with Taraji. They fed the extras crap. Taraji bought hundreds of us extras and security gourmet catering out of her own pocket. That is so sweet. And you know, and that's the part that's just really sad is that why does she have to come out of pocket to feed people better? When these studios make so much money, the greed that these studios have is just insane. It, it, you know, I look at things like you can only have so much money in the world. You can't take none of it to the grave with you. So why not treat people better? You know, so bless her heart for doing that. And that's how it was on Straight Outta Compton. That's one thing I would say on Straight Outta Compton, they really looked out. Because sometimes you'll work on a set, they'll just give you a box lunch. 
It was gourmet meals. And one thing I will say is that they really fed the community. Even if you weren't working on set, they allowed people from the community to come and get plates. And it was really good food. When Tyra Banks had her show, she didn't even offer any food. So never again. <laughs> didn't offer anything. Yeah, the greed is insane. But bless her heart for doing that. That means a lot. That's Things like that is what people will not forget. Because again, it's not so much about how you treat people when people are watching. It's what you do when people aren't watching. So thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. Because you be on set a long time. And that food really can keep you going. Uh, Mark Gillis sent 199 says, hey there, T. Much love from Detroit. Thank you so much. Thank you for stopping through. Oh, we have over 10,000 people in here and 2,000 likes. Please hit the like button if you guys are enjoying this stream. Hit the like button, please. Um, SMH sent 49.99 says, Shalice here. I was thirsty for content, LOL. You are the epitome of black excellence and elegance. I support everything you do. Never let the dummies steal your jewels that God put on your crown. Much love, peace, and protection over you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you for your words of encouragement. I really, really appreciate that, sis. Thank you. Um, let's see here. Michael Scales said 1999 says, you know what's really interesting? It was the media slash film guy in college who still one day wants to be a writer slash filmmaker. I knew major theaters and kids, film majors, et cetera, with this entertainment A-list celebs have. Definitely. Thank you so much for the super chat. Yeah, I just, I, I, it's, it's really sad because again, they're trying to get rid of people and have AI do everything. But it, it's sad because it's like, what about the up and coming, you know, like you said, filmmakers, the, the actors, the actresses. And I think another thing that kind of ruined it for people too in the acting world is that when we were younger, and I'm not saying that you're not allowed to cross over, but it's almost too much of that now. Now you have influencers, people who've never acted a day in their life, but just because they're popular, they're getting these roles. Roles that really should go to people who studied the craft. You know, so that's another unfortunate thing is that these actors are now fighting, you know, for what they do. That's what they do for a living. That That is their craft. And now people just think they can do anything. You have rappers trying to be comedians. You have comedians trying to be rappers. You have influencers trying to be actors. It's like everything is just so convoluted now. So it's almost like what's the point of going to schools like Juilliard and trying to be the best in your craft when they're just going to book somebody like Krishan Rock to play a role just because she's popular, you know? So that's another thing that's sad. So now let's go ahead. I want to segue real quick here um, and talk about how long I've been on here. Okay, an hour and 12 minutes. Okay, I'm, I'm going to keep going because I have a lot of stuff to I want to hit on. Um, okay, Christian Keys. Okay, we got to talk about the Christian Keys situation. Now, a lot of people were mad at me because I called him a, a D-list actor. Um, I don't know if y'all are new here, but in Hollywood, there's, you know, there's classifications of actors. His name is not one of those prominent names. And I'm not saying he hasn't had a stellar career in what he's done. But from when I looked up stuff, most of the comments, when he first came out, most of the comments were like, who is this? What did he play in? Who's Christian Keys? You know, and I understand he's done some stuff with DC. He's done Tyler Perry stuff. He's done stuff with BET. But I wasn't saying that to disparage him. People are ranked in categories. You have people telling me he's as big as Denzel. How and when? I can literally say Denzel Washington. I can say I can say Denzel, and I don't even have to add the Washington. You'll know who I'm talking about. He's not as big as Denzel. Like, can we just stop? Y'all be caping for people based on their looks. Because the amount of comments and tattoo tears about me calling him D-list is insane. Because, again, if he didn't look like nothing, y'all wouldn't even care that I said that. Y'all would not have cared. Oh, my gosh. Moneybag Moe's in the building. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Moneybag Moe. Oh, my goodness. She just dropped $499.99. Thank you so much. 
Moneybag Mo, a.k.a. Monique, I really appreciate you. Thank you for just coming through and just blessing me and showing me love. You do that whenever you come through, and um, it means a lot to me. It's very, very humbling because, again, y'all don't have to do it. So I'm, I'm just very, very humbled. So thank you, sis. Thank you so much. And, again, I want to send her something so bad. I want to send her, like, a lovely tea, you know what I'm saying, Christmas basket with, like, all of my items, but she does not email me. If you would please email me and contact me, I will send you something. Just like she's like a number one fan at this point. And I, I really appreciate it. It really means a lot. It's very, very humbling. You know, again, like I tell you all the time, you can't pay for this type of support. I don't ask anybody to donate, to super chat, none of that. Because I understand people got their own bills, their own situations. So the fact that y'all do, it means a lot to me. And I'm um, just, just thank you so much, Monique. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, like I said, I be feeling like for real, like I get more love online than even in my personal life. So thank you so much for real. Um, oh my gosh, don't start crying. But um, as far as uh, Christopher Keys goes, um, he's not an A-lister, but y'all can still get mad at that. Um, his moves are kind of funny to me. I'm going to keep it real with y'all. I believe everything that he says happened to him happened because you do have a lot of predators in this industry and they try and take advantage of people, especially people who are in positions of power. And especially if you're not a A-lister, um, they want to see what you're willing to do to get to that next level. And um, <laughs> thank y'all so much. I appreciate y'all's comments. And so recently, he's been kind of catching flack because he liked a post. I'm going to read this post to y'all. Where he seemingly, the post is defending Tyler Perry. Because you guys know when this first came out, I said, I'm going to sit back and, and wait for all this to play out. I'm not going to say that it's Tyler Perry because I've heard many different names. And I don't think it's fair to accuse anybody of anything without solid proof. Sexual assault is not a joke out here. It can ruin somebody's entire everything that they've built. So I don't, I don't believe in supporting false allegations. If Tyler Perry is guilty and he's done this, then he should be held accountable. But until he names that person, there's nothing we can do. So we have posted this the other day. Let me go ahead and zoom in a bit here. So this person wrote this. They said, um, it is what it is, says, watching Christian Keys and can tell he is clearly a victim, only three grand to his name and violated by a gay billionaire. And no, I don't believe it was TP. I wish Christian would have taken action. That man will still have his money and good name and Christian will remain, remain bo broken. So as you guys see, Christian ended up liking this, right? And so then it's like, okay, you're seemingly defending Tyler. And so he later on went into the comment section of um, this blog post. Let me pull this up. And this is what he said in the comments section. Okay. He says in the comments section, what the eyeball emoji, if I say who it is, it will break y'all's hearts. And I love this person's response. This person says at Christian Keys, not mine. I don't care. I don't worship celebrities, only God. The age of Aquarius is exposing them. Okay. My thing is, sir, like I said on Instagram, if you're not going to shit, get off the pot. And y'all can say, well, that's mean. Y'all are forcing him to, you know, to expose somebody when he's not ready. Um, no, what's mean is that he took to social media and disrupted my piece on, on a good Sunday when I was trying to cook dinner. And while I was cooking that whole Sunday, I'm sitting here listening to all these allegations because I told you I watched the whole hour stream as I'm cooking. Okay. He hit us up. We showed him support. And my thing is, even if you don't want to expose him, because I get it, maybe he has to talk to lawyers, maybe, you know, he's nervous. Then you're not, then what you need to do, you got to do the right thing by defending those who are being accused. 
If you don't want to expose the person who did it, then you need to come out and say who didn't do it. Because at this point, social media has turned this into a duck hunt. It's like, you know, duck, duck, goose. And it's a lot of names being thrown out there. And it's not okay. Again, I don't know if Tyler Perry did it or didn't do it. I've heard some people saying his name. I've heard other names as well. Y'all still ain't been able to figure out who F is, but I'm definitely not going to put F's name out there, but F's name, you know, that's also my psyche as well. Hell, people was even accusing Gary F. Gray, F. Gary Gray, whatever the hell his name is. People was dragging him the other night. I ain't heard that name since straight out of Compton. And it's like you're sitting here watching all this. So either you're going to name somebody or at least defend the people who didn't touch you. And so my thing is, it's very interesting now. He's getting a lot of clout from this. His followers have jumped up dramatically, which I knew they would be because folks are nosy. And now he's like posting old interviews. The Shade Room was posting his old interviews. Nobody was checking for Christian Keys before all of this drama. But y'all swerping down, he's A-list. He's on the same level as Denzel Washington. Oh, them bitches was caping hard as hell for Christian in my chat. I said, it's only because he's fine. If he didn't look like nothing, y'all wouldn't have gave a damn what, what category I put him in. But let's go ahead and watch this video he posted on, uh, well, the Shade Room posted it. He's talking yeah, about he was being abused or something. Hold on. Let me share my screen real quick here. Again, pretty privilege works for men too, honey. If you a fine man, they gonna cape for you. Just like if you a pretty girl, they gonna cape for you hard. They was dragging me. Bitches was threatening to unsubscribe because I called him a D-lister. I was like, okay, sis, it ain't that serious, but bye. Um, okay, so he says, this is an interview I did with Atlanta Black Star a while back. Maybe it's a little easier to understand why it's difficult for me to speak up about it and difficult to find courage. These powerful people target people with traumatic childhoods and use that bond with them and earn their trust and they try their attempts. Once you go through anything like this, what I went through for years as a kid, new trauma can almost make you shut down again and no, hold on. To say no to the attempt, you still may not be strong enough to speak up or brave enough. Worrying about if this person is going to take away my livelihood. Worrying about how many other people are out there that weren't strong enough to say no. They actually said yes, and this person is still doing it. Still pressuring people to walk away from their integrity and their morals and their opportunities. You pray and gather strength to speak. Most people are in their corner and they believe you. I'm not going to respond to ignorant or negative comments that have been made. I just pray for those people that never have this experience themselves or never have any family members that go through anything traumatic. Then they have people talking ish about me who don't even know them. And Bobby Lights is in the comments, top my girl, please. So I don't know. First adoption, um, Mrs. Keys was incredibly abusive. Um, I mean, bat, hammer, broomstick, saucepan, bottle, um, when the belt didn't, when it was, I can, I can speak on the first adoption. Um, Mrs. Keys was incredibly abusive. Make us scream loud enough, she would hold the leather side and beat us with the belt buckle. It gets worse. Um, but it was that kind of environment between 8 and 12, so it wasn't as effective as she Okay, we're not going to watch everything. Y'all can go in the shade room and watch his full, um, you know, abuse story. Um, again, like I said, I believe everything he said is that happened to him. I, I don't doubt his story um, because, you know, I've heard lots of industry stories from both men and women, you know, who have been propositioned and put into, you know, certain situations and stuff like that. But again... Sir, if you want to stop further abuse, if you want to stop further people from being victimized by, you know, said perpetrator, you, you got to say something. You got to say something. You can't get mad that people are having their opinions or talking ish. You put this out here. It's not like somebody, you know, ran to the blogs on your behalf. You brought everybody to the front yard. 
And so now people are saying, hey, you need to let us know what's going on. At least defend the folks who didn't touch you. So, you know, the whole thing is really sad. I, I just hope that he eventually finds the strength to speak and talk about, you know, who the perpetrator was. But I really feel like, again, like I said earlier, Hollywood is imploding on itself. It's not what it was. The checks aren't coming in like they once were. Now he's saying that the statute of limitations has expired. So meaning, you know, they can't be any criminal prosecutions, right? But they can still be monetary stuff. And forgive me, my nails, I cut my nails off. I broke two nails, so I decided to cut them all off and start over. So the only thing I have on here is clear nail polish. My nails look a mess. Yeah, I remember I had my long natural nails. I cut them all off. The Only my pinky nail remains. But um, yeah, people were accusing Lee Daniels. I mean, it was all types of names. Kirk Franklin. <laughs> like, I mean, any name, you know, and so that's what I'm saying. Like, you opened up a can of worms. So you got to figure out what you're going to do. I think Cassie definitely opened the door for a lot of people because she got such a big payday so quickly. And maybe he's not saying anything because we don't know what's going on behind the scenes. You know, did that person grease his palms? Because you're in the comment section with eyeball emojis saying it will break our heart. It's not going to break our heart. Because most of us, you know, are not going to be that shocked. What's heartbreaking is that you're sitting on this information and you're in comment sections, you know, key in with people. Spill the tea. It's sad. Because like I said, there's people's names being thrown out there. <laughs> Somebody said LL Cool F. Y'all play too much. <laughs> Not LL Cool F. Y'all play too damn much. I'm not fooling with y'all in this chat. <laughs> y'all just throwing out names at this point. Who the hell is LL Cool F? <laughs> Somebody said Frank Ocean. Uh-uh. But that's what I'm saying. Like, everybody's going crazy now trying to put two and two together. But it really happens. You know, and, and unfortunately, sometimes, too, um, you have a lot of gay guys. They take, you know, straight men, especially straight men who are fine, like Christian. You know, Christian is a very handsome man. And they take that as a challenge. Like, oh, I'm going to turn him out. I'm going to get with him. And some of these straight men feed into it, too. Because I've known some straight men, you know, they say they're straight. But then they'll also tell you all money spends. They'll go into, you know, gay clubs and catfish. If you don't swing that way, sir, why are you in the clubs playing gay? You got straight men out here being gay for pay. And I'm not saying that that's Christian at all. So don't, you know, I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying straight men in general. Some of y'all be playing these little weird games too with these gay boys. And then y'all get mad when they grab your nuts. Quit playing with folks. That's all I'm saying. You got a lot of people who just, you know, they play these little games. Nobody deserves to be assaulted. Everybody deserves respect. Keep your hands to yourself. And when male victims come out, we need to believe them. That's why I was so disappointed when the way Terry Crews was treated and now everybody's crying tattoo tears for Christian and Christian ain't even named nobody. Terry Crews said his piece. He named Adam, what's his name, Vinette. He even spoke on Congress about abuse in Hollywood. And you had so many people, especially other black men, 50 Cent, D.L. Hughley, making fun of this man. No one deserves to be emasculated, to be touched on. It happens to both genders. But if you know it and you know who this person is, say something so it can stop happening going forward. And we talked about this yesterday in Zoom. Y'all going to leave uh, Forrest Whitaker out y'all's fuckery. Y'all leave that man alone. Forrest Whitaker is minding his own business. 
Y'all are not going to do Forrest Whitaker like that. Talking about probably it was Forrest Whitaker who grabbed him. Nah, y'all not going to do Forrest Whitaker like that. <laughs> y'all leave that man alone. He don't bother nobody. Y'all are a mess. But no, we were talking about this in Zoom yesterday. And I think part of this that goes on in the industry is a sickness, right? Think about it like this. The victim then in turn becomes the victimizer. And I think a lot of that goes on in the industry. And the best example of this, like I said yesterday, is remember, who remembers the, uh, the new edition story? Remember how they were screwed? They, they were in the worst contracts. You know, all these businessmen took their money, the label, you know, literally robbed them blind. And then remember at the end of the movie, they did the same thing to boys to men. And they said, well, that's just the industry. That's just how it goes. And I believe that's the same thing that happens on a sexual level. Because you had to get up on the casting couch and suck Harvey Weinstein off and jerk off this producer and smutch herself to get to the top. Now you turn around and do that to somebody else or you groom the next young girl and try to bring her guards down and make her feel like this is normal. This is what, what you got to do to make it in Hollywood. So a lot of these people who are, who are victimizers, well, they themselves victims as well. Look how many people have said that Andre Harrell was the one who turned out Diddy. And they said Clive Davis turned out Andre Harrell. So that's the part that's just the sickness in the, in the industry. Yes, Morgan Freeman's another one. He was out here sleeping with his stepdaughter or step-granddaughter. And then her baby daddy or boyfriend went crazy and ended up offing her a few years ago. They don't talk about that. There's a lot of sick things that go on in Hollywood. And the problem is people have money, they have power, they have prestige. And they feel like they're untouchable. People make excuses for them. In no other place in society do people like pamper you like they do in Hollywood. You never have to worry about cooking your own meals. Everything's on set. You're in a trailer. Everything you could ever want or wish is there. Drugs, females, booze. So it's really sad. It's really sad. Yeah, Woody Allen's another freak. So yeah, I, I don't know. I just hope that Christian Keys ends up, you know, saying something. Um, people need to know what's up. People are curious. So now speaking, I want to I want to segue into this. Speaking on on everything that's going on in the industry. Um, I want to talk about the Gloria Velez situation with um, Jean Deal. So, uh, as we all know, Jean Deal has been out here, child. Him, Mark Curry, they've been spilling a lot of tea. And like I said, they've been out here for years talking about everything that's been going on, you know, with Diddy and a lot of things in the industry. But the more I watch their interviews, the more a lot of things don't sit well with my spirit. And um, especially when Mark Curry talked about the whole Moet situation, how he said that when he be with Diddy, Diddy and, the, you know, the crew would say, you see those Moet bottles right there? Don't touch those. Those are for the girls. These Moet bottles are for us. And in those Moet bottles, there were obviously drugs. They were laced. And he said it would get the girls loose and they would start popping pills in their mouth like birds. And that really bothered me when I did that stream about two weeks ago. Because to me, you're just as complacent in the fuckery. And it got me to thinking. I remember when I was on set on how to get away with murder and I passed out, you know, medical reasons. My hemoglobin was dangerously low. I had no idea. It had dropped down to a three. And they said, if I wouldn't have passed out on set, I probably would have died in my... Uh, at my place it was because i was on set and there was a set medic they were able to call the ambulance and get me to glendale memorial hospital but i remember when i passed out and it was the scariest thing to not be in control of your body i remember me and another actor we were just sitting there we were having breakfast and i got up to go throw my food away 
And as I got to the trash can and I was just like, what's happening to me? Like, that's the last thing I remember me saying. Cause it's like, I just started getting dizzy. And before I could throw my food in the trash, I just collapsed in front of everybody. And um, from what I was told, everybody came running up to me and, you know, they were trying to bring me back too. And as I'm coming back too, I'm scared because I don't know where I'm at. I don't know all these weird faces around me. I'm looking for my kids. And they're like, you know, just calm down. You passed out. And I'm like, what? I had never passed out before. And I remember security picked me up. And they bought me to, I don't know whose trailer it was. I think it was, it was a man's trailer. They bought me to the trailer. And they had me wait in the trailer while they called the ambulance. The set medic was there. They were giving me, um, they were checking my blood pressure. I remember I took a selfie in the trailer and I posted on Facebook. And I'm like, I just passed out. I'm not doing good, you guys. Keep me in prayer. Something I wrote on Facebook years ago. And so I got to thinking back to that experience when I passed out and I couldn't control my body. And the security guard had to pick me up and bring me to a trailer. It made me think, who was carrying these girls? If these Moet bottles are there and they're spiked and these girls are literally high and drunk out their mind, Diddy wasn't carrying all these girls. Remember, there were bunches of girls there, lots of girls, all the coots you could have in the world. Who's carrying these girls that are passed out? Because when you're passed out, you're literally like a sack of potatoes. I think these security guards played more of a role than they want to admit. Like I said, when I see people who all of a sudden want to flip and really atone, like Dusty Russell Simmons, who's in a self-imposed a self exile in Bali, because all the fuck shit he did to women here, it makes me side eye them. The fact that these men keep talking and talking and talking, it makes me feel like, what do y'all really feel guilty about? I refuse to believe that there are all these young girls there in the vicinity, some of the most beautifulest girls in the world. A lot of men fantasize about these video vixens. And y'all were just there, what, just there to play cards and, you know, eat peanuts and smoke weed. I believe all of these people who are in these rooms with these young women who are passing out were complacent. If you knew that something was laced and you did not warn any of these young girls that what they were drinking were laced, you were complacent. When these young girls passed out, who picked them up? Because when you're passed out and you have no control of your body, you can't walk yourself out the damn door. Somebody has to walk you out that door. You have to be linked on somebody. Somebody has to carry you out that room. There's no pictures of Diddy carrying girls passed out out the room. So I believe they were very involved in a lot of this stuff and everybody's trying to distance themselves now right just like the r kelly case remember london on the tracks mama was one of the main groomers at the mall being r kelly's wing woman telling young girls oh you know r kelly's trying to holla at you da 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 this industry is dirty i was watching Another one of Gene's interviews that really bothered my spirit. I've noticed he's been on this threatening thing with Gloria Velez, and I don't understand why. Because Gloria literally doesn't bother anybody. Um, she's done her, her, her shit back in the day. Everybody's aware of how Gloria Velez got into the industry as a video vixen. We've all seen, you know, videos back in the day of her wilding out. But what a lot of people don't understand is that that girl was high out her mind. She was drugged a lot of times. And she was manipulated by a lot of older men in the industry who should have known better, including her baby's father. So I was watching Art of Dialogue, shout out to him, and uh, MREC TV. And there were two interviews that were done with Gene Deal where he's like threatening to release video of her. And it just, it, it really kind of bothered me. Like, why are we going there all of a sudden? 
you know, and I've always been, you know, I've always enjoyed some of Jean Deal's stories, but what's up with these threats to this lady? Gloria Velez, she came out and, you know, she called out the video that we did where you was talking about her and Aaron Hall, and she said that she never met you before. How do you feel about her saying that? I think that Gloria need to look in history and see all the things that she done. Now she's going to get out there and she's going to sit up and talk about, yo, he's lying just to, he'll do anything just to get interviews and all that stuff. Man, listen to me. I got way more stories than a Gloria Velez story. I got a whole lot of stories they never even heard of. So me saying what she said, come on, man. And she talked about Aaron, and then she tells the lie now. Oh, that name Aaron across my seat is because of my son. Who put their son name across their pussy? Yeah, that's weird. That's very weird, bro. <laughs> she put Aaron Hall name across her pussy because at the time, that was Aaron pussy. That wasn't, it had nothing to do with her son. So she could talk all the shit about Gene Deal that she want to. But she know her own history. And God bless her if she straightened herself out. Leave me alone. Because that'll be the next take on all the dialogue. So you have a tape in your possession of her walling up. I got the tape, bro. But it's some very important people on that tape also. That you don't want to expose. That I don't want to expose. But they got a way of blocking them out. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't get into stuff like that. Nine times out of ten, when I speak on something, I speak on uh, a situation, I'm personally involved in that, man. And I, I want to let y'all fans know, man, that, you know, I ain't never lied about nothing. So when this girl, Miss Gloria Velez, came out and said that uh, I ain't never talked to P. Diddy bodyguard, yo, sweetheart. Wow. I was Scott Sports bodyguard at the time. You just know me as Peter bodyguard now. But the time we was at, I was with, with we was to, at Malibu and we was at Kanye West party. I was Scott Sports bodyguard. Scorch Storch, whatever this motherfucking name is, from Tough Jew Production. I was his bodyguard when you told us that story about Aaron. Mm. So don't make yourself look bad out there. Because, Rick, you know I got some tapes, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know I got some tapes, right? Oh, yeah. Gene got some tapes. I got some tapes, right? He got some tapes. I ain't going to front. I so. got some tapes. And let's remind her what she did in Cancun. Uh-oh. That's all. Just remind her what she did with Cancun. Man. With Coco on the stage. I have some tapes. Leave me alone. All right. So y'all just heard what he said. Um, I, I don't I don't get it. I don't understand his beef with her because she said she doesn't know him. Um, OK, <laughs> you know, and my thing is he's saying that he has some tapes. He better hope she was of age. Because Gloria had been out there, you know, what I'm saying with like a lot of these people doing videos, she started as a teenager. 14, 15 years old. So that's really disturbing that he's screaming that he has tapes of her and things like that. And, you know, if it's the tape that people remember back in the day, she was still a teenager. And I think in the interview that he did with Art of Dialogue, he said she was 16. Those are not the type of tapes that you want to have and brag about wanting to release. You know, I just, I just find the whole situation just really sad. And again, back in the day, it's like a lot of this stuff was seen as more acceptable. And a lot of times as women, you don't realize that you're being manipulated until you get older and you look back at, and you look back at it. If you guys remember, um, Corey Feldman said this too. 
He said he didn't know until he looked back at it as he got older. He said they were everywhere. Who was everywhere? He said they were everywhere I turned around. All of these pedos in the industry that literally harassed and, you know, molested him and Corey Haynes. They were everywhere. But you don't understand that as a kid, you just want to be accepted by the adults around you. When you're young, you want to be grown. And then once you, want to, once you get grown, you wish you were a kid again. And that's why I always tell young people to like really appreciate the space and the time that you're in. Appreciate your youth. You're never going to get that back. Stop trying to grow up too fast. You're only that age one time. So I, it's just very heartbreaking. I just, I just hate it. Like, I just felt like, you know, usually I watch his interviews and I enjoy them, but I'm like, damn, it's like kind of taking a dark turn. Like, why is she being threatened with the release of tapes that were made when she was possibly underage? And people don't understand. I, and, and even when I look back on it, I know we had a really deep convo last night. I feel like a part of my childhood was just a huge lie with all the stuff that's coming out like the things that we're finding out that was really going on behind the scenes. Because these girls, the Gloria Velezes, the, the Superheads, the um, Esther Baxter, Buffy the Body, these were the girls that we were like looking up to in hip hop. They were living the life. Melissa Ford. These women were beautiful. They were with some of the most successful rappers and entertainers. We had no idea as kids that this was going on behind the scenes. We're just watching the videos and we're seeing them in the big pimping video. And they're at Carnival and Gloria's in that beautiful white fur outfit. And we're looking at it as kids like this is the life. I would love to do something like that. It's no different than when young girls look at models ripping the runway. Naomi Campbell, Tyra Banks. We're thinking they're just wearing beautiful clothes and living their life. They're walking the runways of Milan and, and, you know, Paris and things like that. Then we find out there's a bunch of sinister shit going on behind the scenes. It's really sad, like just everything that's going on that we're being awoken to. So before people act like, oh, you know, that was back in the day. You know, y'all were just being fast. Why were y'all looking up to video vixens anyways? It's no different than what y'all do now. Y'all sit around and look up to influencers all day. Y'all sit and follow, you know, influencer, whatever influencer with the latest BBL all day. So it was the same thing back then. We just didn't have social media. And these were the people that were fed to us to look up to. The Diddy's and the Russell Simmons, because they were rich. They were well-to-do black men. They got themselves out the hood. They're making a way for their family and, and, you know, they're living a lifestyle. They had their own clothing brand. Only to find out everything was just a mirage. These people were terrible. They weren't paying people. They were abusing people. They were taking advantage of people. And now the chickens are coming home to roost. The age of Aquarius, things are being exposed. I don't feel bad for any of these people. It's it's really sad, the things that went on back then. You know, and I just feel like, dang, it's like, I can't even, it's, it's hard even when you think about like, just like the different celebrities and just the different things. Like, I think Danny Boy, he's been back on Art of Dialogue talking about how like Misa was messing with Suge Knight. I had no idea all that was going on. And Suge Knight posted a picture of him babysitting Justin. What in the hell? It's like the industry is just a, a ratchet ass high school. It's no different than just high school. It's just people who have more fame, notoriety, and, and money. So they get away with a lot more stuff than regular folks. So that's why I say don't look up to nobody. Look up to yourself and, you know what I'm saying, keep your relationship tight with God. Because, you know, men and women will disappoint you every single time. So... A lot of these fallen idols are, are falling. I feel no ways about Diddy. It's very funny that now all these major companies want to jump on the Diddy bandwagon and, um, you know, cancel him. And they don't want him anywhere near the Grammys and all this stuff. But these, these Diddy stories are not new. I've been keeping my, my foot on Diddy's neck for years. Even through the backlash, the draggings, the threats, getting cussed out. 
being told, you know, I was blackmail bashing, even though I'm defending other black men like Mace and Freddie P because of what Diddy did to them. But the reason why it's even being listened to now on a different, um, with, a, with a fresh set of eyes is because of the victim. Cassie is the perfect victim. She's beautiful, she's racially ambiguous, and she's unproblematic. You've never known Cassie to be involved in a bunch of mess. So they can't dismiss it. Where if it was loudmouth Carisha who won't shut the fuck up about getting peed on and doing interviews, you know, just the most low vibrational, nasty interviews. She did one recently with Ari where Ari's talking about she would let somebody use the bathroom on her. Literally willing to sell her soul for a bag. But because Cassie's the perfect, because Cassie's the perfect victim, People are not willing to ostracize Diddy and wash their hands of Diddy. But when that young black man from making the band, Freddie P, was having a mental breakdown two years ago, how many people outside of myself and a few other black YouTubers even covered it? When he was having a mental breakdown about the stuff he went through on making of the band, where were all these Hollywood folks? Where were all these, you know, execs? to pull back. When Mace was out here calling Diddy out over and over again, when he said, your name should not be brother love because there's nothing loving about you. Nobody cared, nobody covered it besides me and a few other people. So again, Cassie's the perfect victim. So now they're taking it seriously. So the whole situation is sad. But I'm just, I'm not feeling that. I'm not feeling, you know, Jean sending shots at her. I just, I just don't get that. Um, you know, at the end of the day, a lot of these young girls were manipulated, you know, and it's very easy to dismiss it and be like, oh, they were just fast. They knew what was going on. They asked for it. But when you get people who are in impoverished situations, and you take them from this situation to what they deem or think is glamorous, a lot of y'all would have went. You just didn't have that opportunity. So yeah, it's, it's really sad. It's really sad, all the stuff that's going on. So now last but not least, before I go, I wanna hit up on the um, Jonathan Major situation because I've been on here for almost two hours here. So Jonathan Majors, he was found guilty. We're going to watch this news clip. And Marvel dropped him. So he's no longer with Disney. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with y'all here real quick. Tonight about actor Jonathan Majors. Marvel Studios just dropped the once rising star after a jury in New York found him guilty of assaulting and harassing his ex-girlfriend. Marvel was building a movie franchise around Majors before his arrest in March. CBS's Jerika Duncan was in court today for the verdict. Tonight, Jonathan Majors walked out of court with heavy security after being found guilty of assault and harassment. He was acquitted of two other charges that required prosecutors to show Majors intentionally committed those acts. Do you think your son got a fair trial? The 34-year-old star has denned since he was arrested in March after a fight with his ex-girlfriend, Grace Jabari. He played roles in Marvel films and Creed 3, but it was his performance in the TV series Lovecraft Country that made Hollywood take notice. During deliberations, the jury asked to re-watch surveillance video from the incident in slow motion, where it appears Major shoves Jabari into a black Escalade. Another video shows Jabari running after Majors following the incident. She testified she grabbed Major's phone after seeing a text message from another woman. In a criminal complaint, Jabari accused Majors of assaulting her, leaving a cut behind her ear and fracturing her finger. CBS News legal analyst Ricky Kleeman. That Jonathan Majors did not intend to cause any physical harm to this woman. But what Jonathan Majors did, by virtue simply of his actions, his size, his strength, was create a substantial risk of physical injury. Majors and his family did not speak to the media as they left the court today. Grace Jabari, who was not in the courtroom when the verdict was read, did release a statement saying she was, quote, gratified to see justice served. 
Majors faces up to a year behind bars, nor he is scheduled to be sentenced on February 6th. Trika Duncan, thank you. All right. <laughs> I just read a comment. Y'all are a mess. Okay. So the Jonathan Majors situation, I haven't really covered his story on my channel like that. Um, you know, him and the, the white lady got into it. He put hands on her. Um, she was also putting hands on him. And so he's been found guilty and uh, Disney fired him. So there's not going to be any more Kang series and he won't be doing anything with, with Disney. And a lot of people are really upset. They're saying that it's racist. Um, Robert Downey Jr. had all types of issues and, you know, they allowed him to keep being Iron Man. The difference is Robert Downey Jr., let's start here, he's a white man. Um, so let, let's start there. But the only person that Robert Downey Jr. hurt was himself. He was doing fucking eight balls of Coke and drinking liquor. Um, he didn't, there's no videos of Robert Downey Jr. beating women and putting hands on women. He'd be sky, you know, high, you know, higher than Kuda Brown, but that was really about it. So you really can't even compare that. And when Robert Downey Jr. came back to playing the Iron Man, that was after he was clean and Hollywood was willing to give him another chance. Jonathan Majors messed up because this is the height of his career. Again, like I said at the beginning of this stream, you have to be very, very careful with the man or woman that you choose to bring into your life, especially if you have something to lose. When you have something to lose, the right person can make or break your entire situation. Now remember, the white girl was upset because another female kept texting her man. They were in a relationship together. Then all of a sudden, when all this came out, now he's with Megan Good. Like I said months ago, was Megan Good the other woman? So again, you over here trying to be a player player instead of being faithful or breaking it off with her and then moving on. And he's literally lost everything because of one night. And it's sad. But I'm curious as to why she wasn't charged as well. She was also hitting on him. If we're going to charge him, why is she not facing any charges? I find that very interesting. But I just, I don't agree with the comparison of Robert Downey Jr. and Jonathan Majors. And then we also have to understand, too, we're not in the era of Me Too in Time's Up. We've been in, it, we've been in this era since 2017. They're not playing anymore. People are already not watching movies like that. Half of the movies that Marvel have put out have sucked. And y'all know I'm a big Marvel fan and I haven't even been keeping up with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I've been over it. I didn't even like Wakanda 2, Black Panther 2. So they're already struggling. Bob Igar, he don't know what to you know think at this point. That's the Disney CEO. They're not going to allow Jonathan Majors to you know tank their brand any more than it already is. And that's just what it is. If you worked a regular nine to five and the police came to your job to arrest you for beating your wife, you may not have a job. Am I frozen? Oh, it looks like we're back frozen again. YouTube is on that funny stuff. And I don't know why, because I'm using my regular MacBook. All right, y'all, hold on. Let me see if I can refresh. That is so weird.
Okay, I'm back. Can y'all see and hear me? I don't know what's up with that. I don't know. It's like every time I hit the two hour mark, it just starts. To, somebody said Disney did it. <laughs> it like freezes up. I don't know because I'm not even using my other camera. I'm using my laptop camera. And so nothing is connected. It's just my laptop. So it, I don't know. I don't know if it's YouTube. I don't know if it's StreamYard. But it's like as soon as I hit two hours, it's like everything just like shuts down on itself. I don't know if anybody else is going through that as of late. Okay, cool. My screen came back up. Hold on. Make sure I can see my live chat. Okay, I'm back now. I'm sorry about that. I don't know what that's about. It's like as soon as I hit two hours, it starts bugging. So I don't know, but I'm about to get ready to get up off of here anyways. So yeah, we have over 10,000 people in the building. Please hit that like button. We got 4,000 likes. The likes aren't mathing, <laughs> okay? But thank y'all so much, though, for coming through. Let me read these last few Super Chats before I head up out of here. Um, if I missed your Super Chat, I apologize. Um, let me see here. Uh, Brown Sugar Gabby says, Send and love tea. Happy holidays to you and your family from Lafayette, Louisiana. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Chelsea sent a $10 Super Sticker. Thank you. Uh, Candace Gordon sent 10 says, have you seen the trailer for the movie Civil War? Between that and Leave the World Behind, they're definitely letting us know what's to come. I have not seen it yet. I tried to watch Leave the World Behind the other night. Uh, child, I went to sleep. I, I saw there was a big ship coming. The white girl, the little white girl kept staring at the ship. Then I saw a bunch of people running. And then all I know is I woke up like three hours later and Netflix was like, are you still there? And I was like, no, bitch. <laughs> Click, turned off the TV, went to sleep. So I need to go back and watch it, but I fell asleep. <laughs> I must have been tired because I woke up, you know, and that's what Netflix was asking me. So apparently I missed the whole movie and fell asleep. But I'm going to go back and watch it. I've been hearing like, you know, I've been hearing some people like it and then other people are saying that it's whack. So I don't know, but I do want to watch it for myself. <laughs> What's up, Danny Darcel? Darcel says, hey, T, sending you love, mama. You look good. They're saying that Cassie turned Kim's burner phone into the feds and T.D. Jakes is a power bottom. <laughs> Not a power bottom. Don't tell me that T.D. Jakes is the uh, man that... <laughs> Let me not be messy. <laughs> Let me not be messy. I'm not messing with y'all. Who was he power bottoming for? Who was he a power bottom for? I need the tea. Y'all are a mess. Y'all not gonna do y'all gonna leave that bishop alone. Leave the bishop alone. Y'all play too much. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, let me see here. Uh Jamarian 2010 uh, sent $10 says, did you hear what Keefe D said, LOL? He said he is taking back his admission and that it was all for entertainment. <laughs> no, I did not hear that. A whole gangster don't want to go to jail. LOL, love you. Not Keefe D. Not Mr. Bought That Life, who been bragging for the past 10 years about killing Tupac and cracking jokes. Oh, not it being for entertainment purposes only. Uh-uh, no, you don't get to do that. Mm -mm. Fuck you and your tiny violin. Go straight to jail, Keefe D. Uh-uh. Oh, hell, I got to see that video. I did not know that. But when he was on these platforms bragging, getting a check. Oh, he loved the attention, but now this stuff is getting real. Now the sudden it was just entertainment. Uh-uh, keep that same energy that you had on Art of Dialogue. Keep the same energy you had on Vlad TV, uh, or should we say Fed TV. Keep the same energy you had when you was bragging all over social media about killing Tupac with your uh, nephew Orlando Anderson, sir. So that is very funny. He's trying to uh, say it was for entertainment purposes. Sir, sit the hell down. Desiree Nicole, what's up, Desiree? Hey, sis. She sent five. She said, I had to let my membership expire due to being on strike with the UAW, but I'm back. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming back. And um, your teacup is back. It picked up right where you left off. So you still got your purple teacup. So thank you for being a member. I really appreciate you, sis. Uh, let's see here. I 
Okay, I read that one. I'm just trying to see who I didn't, who I missed. Uh, Ugusi, you you Yuga, Ugusi Hazuki. That is such a pretty name, and I'm sorry if I butchered it. It's either African or Japanese, but I love it. They said you're one of the best commentary channels. I just became a member a month ago. Your deep dives are amazing. Hope you make more true crime tea time videos. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. My deep dives take a long time to make, but just getting feedback from you all means a lot. Um, you guys know what's going on right now with Vimeo. Unfortunately, people have been passing my deep dives. The deep dives are literally $5 a month, but you know, people like to break rules and people started passing the link out. And so I ended up getting hit with a bill for 13 grand for, um, what was it 13 grand for? Like space data data usage i'm not about to i'm not giving vimimo thirteen thousand dollars for data usage no i'm just gonna build my own website so right now we're revamping my whole website and the deep dives will be on my website if i'm gonna put 13 grand into something it's gonna be my own platform so they can kick rocks with that so right now you may or may not be able to access my deep dives just because I, i'm not going to give them thirteen thousand dollars so it's kind of sad, but that's why I don't want people sharing my link. Because again, y'all don't understand, you know, it takes up data. Every time you click on something, you know, server space. I know a lot of y'all think the internet is free and, you know, God just, you know, on the seventh day, you know, God made the internet. No, all of this stuff costs money. It costs data, you know. Um, so they're trying to make the people, and, and I already paid them per month. Vimeo is not a free site for me to use. They get paid monthly. But now they're trying to put the data um, rates on us. They want us to pay for it. And I'm, I'm not, that, that would be insane to put 13 grand into another platform when they could wake up one day and be like, oh, your deep dives are controversial. You're out of here. And then they keep my 13 grand? Absolutely the hell not. So thank you. Um, so right now we're revamping my website. We're turning my website into a video site. Um, so that way I can put, put my deep dives on there. So that's where that's going to be. And it's going to be more secure. We'll know who's coming in and out. And we'll have it where people will have to pay for it. You're not able to pass the link. So um, once that is built out, it's going to take about two months. That is where my Diddy deep dive will be. So stay tuned to that. Um, and my app is out. Um, basically, it is available now on iOS and Android. There's a few things uh, we're working on. So if you guys wanna download it, you guys can download it. It is available now. Um, but it's gonna have the same call-in feature like how we did with the Spotify Green Room. So we're gonna be doing some test runs on the app probably next week. So if you're on Discord or in the YouTube membership and you wanna jump in and kinda help do a test run, um, feel more, you know, feel free to do that. So we're going to be back in 2024 doing the call-in shows. I want to do them weekly on just different topics. So, um, you know, we've had a few bumps in the road just with Spotify Live going away, you know, Vimeo with their $13,000 bill. But it's cool. You know, everything is being worked and revamped in 2024, so I can't wait. So thank you once again for joining the membership and just, you know, supporting my platform. It means a lot to me because, again, a lot of my stuff um, ends up being demonetized, you know. So I appreciate y'all's support. Um, let me see here. Shelly J says, just like she uh, Cheryl Lee Ralph mentioned, a TV judge essayed her. But she made sure to say that it wasn't Judge Mathis. Damn. What judge essayed her? Hopefully it wasn't Judge Wapner, honey. We ain't seen him in ages. That's crazy. But I'm glad she at least said that it wasn't, you know, um, Judge Mathis. And that's my thing with Christian Keys. If it wasn't, you know, Tyler Perry, then say it wasn't. Don't be liking little tweets and comments and stuff like that. Because it's a lot of people being accused of stuff. Somebody said Judge Jerry. I don't even know who Judge... Judge Joe Brown. <laughs> I'm fooling with y'all. <laughs> oh, my God. Who's that other judge that be going off on? Is that Judge Joe Brown? Y'all know damn well Judge Judy ain't touched that lady. 
He's the real conservative judge. <laughs> judge Diddy. <laughs> Yeah, I doubt it was Judge Joe Brown, child. But then who knows? I don't know. Who knows? Um, oh, uh, Mark sent four ninety nine and says, Funky Dineva says he has some tea that he can't reveal yet, but implied that Christian was gay for pay. Honey. Well... I'm not going to co-sign it. I'm going to let Funky Dineva spill that tea, okay? So I'm going to be there. I have watched his other video that he did on the situation. Because, you know, I want to hear from, like, you know, people in the LGBT and how they feel about it. So he made a lot of good points. So, yeah, I'm going to wait for him to spill that tea, child. But thank you for the super chat. Um, Hamilton sent five says T. Cut that pinky nail, too. <laughs> That's the old 80 sign. <laughs> snip, snip. Oh, we're not going to do that. No. I just wanted, you know what I'm saying? One of my nails long, child. Y'all know damn well I don't get down like that. <laughs> but everything else I just cut off. I'm starting all the way fresh. So hopefully they'll be back long by, you know, six, seven months from now. It takes about six, seven months for my nails to grow out. Like to where they're back long and pretty healthy. So it'll be a good start for the new year. Uh, opinionated with uh oh no she changed her name opinionated presents <laughs> the glam tm hey sis thank you for joining the membership appreciate you um let's see here katie bear sent 20 dollars. says i'm a 90s kid we play gang tea sipper and i'm happy i caught a live i love you um being a teen in the late 90s glad for hip-hop justice there's a photo circulating around of robert f smith and puffy at a board meeting No comment. Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate you. And yes, I'm glad that, you know, a lot of this 90s tea is being spilled. It's definitely making me look at a lot of people very differently, you know. And it, it started with Hollywood, you know, with them, draining the strong, with them draining the swamp. And so I'm glad that now it's trickled into hip hop and people are seeing, like, you know, what's really going on behind the scenes. So thank you for that. Um, X Amaya says, I'm in the ER watching your live. I'm always going to make it to watch you, T. Thank you so much, and I hope you're doing okay, being that you're in the ER. I hope everything works out. Thank you for tuning in. Um, let's see here. Oh, hold on. My page is refreshed. Just Board says, hey, T. Hey, uh, much love, T, from Spellman and ATL. They cracking me up saying TD Cakes in the comments. Thank you so much. Did I meet you when I was at Spellman? Uh, this year, like not this year, like a few months ago, I met so many really cool college students at Spelman and Morehouse and Clark Atlanta University. That was my first time. I've never been to like an HBCU, never really been on like a real college campus before. Um, so that was really cool. Just like walking around. I felt like I was like in the movie High Learning, like, you know, walking around the HBCUs. It was really cool. I met like so many cool people. I ran into a few tea sippers. So that was awesome. So shout out to y'all. Shout out to all the HBCUs out there. So thank you for stopping through. Um, I love, I love my HIU sent 499 says, I just downloaded the app. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. And like I said, the app is good too, because I'll be putting notifications on there. So when I go live, you guys will be notified. Um, when we do a green room show, you guys will be notified via the app as well. So yeah, definitely make sure you guys download it. It's available for download. So thank you. Um, let's see here. <laughs> India says, when you froze, I thought they came to get you. No, it's been happening the last few streams. I do not know why. It's like once I hit the two hour mark, everything just freezes up, unfortunately. So, and YouTube has no idea why it's happening. So, unfortunately. Uh, Sachi Wolf Folk says, Happy holidays, T. Many blessings in the new year, sis. Thank you so much and happy holidays to you as well. I appreciate you. Uh, Tiniest Little Kiwi, what's up, sis? Says, T, doing my college homework uh, with T in the background is sound. All right. 
Well, good luck on everything with your homework. Thank you for tapping in. So you guys, I've been on here for over two hours. I'm gonna go ahead and get ready to leave. But thank you so much to everybody who came through. Thank you to everybody who sent the super chat. I'm sorry if I wasn't able to read your super chat. Um, but just thank you guys for the support and for the love and the well wishes. You guys definitely made me feel a lot better. You know what I'm saying? With just stuff I'm going through. So thank you guys so much on that note. Everybody have a good evening, and I will be back with more videos um, sometime this week. So y'all stay blessed, and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.